I want you to know that as an heir of God, that one of your one of your responsibilities is managing the economy of mercy. I'm going to say that again. As an heir of God, as a son of God, one of the key responsibilities is managing the economy of mercy. I'm going to show you what I mean. Let's go to the scripture. Um, we've we're in a theme this week titled the prayer for heirs, keys for praying like a king's kid. And the difference between an heir and um, we could say a hypocrite or a heathen is that I recognize that I'm a son and as an heir, I have a responsibility. And so we're looking at this prayer that Jesus has given us to help us understand how to pray like a king's kid. And this morning, I want you to see that the Lord wants you to daily engage in the economy of mercy. I want you to say that aloud, say the economy of mercy. Now, I really, I don't know, well, I know up front that I'm not going to be able to really touch this the way that I want to. Um, the title came to me just before we started, and I just knew that this was richer than what I had enough time to talk about this morning, but I just want to kind of tap into it, if I may. So let's go to the text. Um, we're in Matthew chapter chapter 6. Um, I'm going to start at verse 9 because we're right into the Lord's Prayer or the Prayer for Heirs. And look at what it says. Um, in this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now watch this. Give us this day our daily bread verse 12, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. What the Lord is teaching us is that we must exercise mercy daily. He's showing us this. In fact, um, this comes from a passage that we find in Micah, um, where the Lord is is very, very clear. Um, I want you to see this. It says, uh, He has shown you, O man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. So this is what God requires of us. He requires us to live um, in mercy, to exercise mercy. Um, what we find even in Scripture is that God is rich in mercy. That's what Paul said in Ephesians. And so because he's rich in mercy, that tells us there's an economy um, in mercy. And so what the Lord wants you to do is know how to navigate within the economy of mercy. So how does that look? Well, Jesus describes this as saying, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debts debtors. Uh, what does that mean? A debt is identified as um, a sin or an offense. It's also defined as that which is justly or legally due, okay? And so, but when we think about sin, what is sin? To sin is to miss the mark. Can you imagine taking a bow and arrow and shooting at a target and the goal is to hit the hit the bullseye, but you were ever so slightly off. You see that? So you don't have to be that far off, but uh, uh, to miss the mark is to miss the mark. You get what I'm saying? This is what sin is. And so what we find is Jesus is teaching us to ask the Lord to forgive us of our debts, to forgive us of our sins. And why is that significant? Because what's the outcome or the legal ramification of sin? It's death. We know that by uh, Romans 6.23 teaches us that, that for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Praise God. Praise God. But he's helping us to understand that you need to recognize on a daily basis that there's a sin issue. In other words, I've got to look at myself every day and recognize um, recognize that there is sin. So I have. You could ask the question, "Have I sinned?" And the uh, the answer is yes. Every one of us have sinned, and uh, 
Now, for the person who's having an issue with that, because sometimes in our flesh we take offense and we get we get frustrated. I'm like, uh, uh-uh, I, I I haven't done anything, but I want to just show you this before you're so quick to say that. And I'm not trying to beat you up. I'm trying to help you out. I want you to look at what the word says around this idea or this question of sin. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10, it says, If we say that we have no sin, we do what? We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. I just want to be very clear. This is what the Lord is showing us about sin. Every one of us have sinned. And so the question is not, have we sinned? Uh, the truth is, every one of us, we could say daily, have missed the mark some way and some form. So what I must do is I must go to the Lord and request or seek out the mercy of God. Let me show you what that looks like. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just. What does the Lord require of us? To do justice, to love mercy. Here goes justice and mercy all in the same thing. Uh, He is just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see that? Yeah. So if we confess it, if we seek out the mercy of God by confessing to him to our our sins, he'll forgive us of our debt. Now, I know I've said a whole lot, but I'm praying that you can see this clearly. If you're with me, say amen. (laughs) Now, we're going to pray in a moment, but I just want to show you one more thing. It's important to know this, because if you're still struggling with that whole sin issue, I want you to look at the danger of this. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, We make him a liar. Who's that? That's God. And his word is not in us. So if you're having a a problem with that, I want to just encourage you to to really take the time to to allow the Lord to, to minister to you, to allow the word to minister to you. The fact is, all of us, I stand at the front of the line to say that I'm in desperate need of the mercy of God. Um, Every day, I'm going to miss the mark in one way or another. And so what the Lord is teaching us, again, is the economy of mercy. You see, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and he's just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. But the economy doesn't stop there. I want to make note of that because oftentimes we want forgiveness, but the truth is we must also forgive others. Let's go back to the the prayer for heirs. The Bible says, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors, as we forgive our debtors. Can you see the flow of mercy, how this economy just keeps moving? Because here it is, we're being forgiven, we're experiencing the mercy of God, and we're expressing that mercy to others. You see how that moves? But what happens when money stops moving inside of an economy? Yeah, it crashes. Uh, Things don't don't work right. Uh, there's, There's a lot of chaos in an economy when there's no flow. And I want you to know that the same thing is true about you, that if you don't allow mercy to flow through your life, your life is not going to thrive. You're going to die um, essentially spiritually, and I'll leave that alone. But the point is, you have to flow as an heir in the economy of mercy. We've got to be forgiven as well as we must forgive others. So I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, that you are an heir of God. And as an heir of God, you need to understand the economy of mercy. Every one of us have sinned. And the truth is, when I consider my sin, what was I owed? I was owed death. My sin deserves death. But I am so grateful that God, who is rich in mercy, even though I was dead in my trespasses, he made me alive in Jesus Christ. And that is worth celebrating. And the last thing I would want is for me to be the only person that benefits from that. So if the Lord had mercy on me, what the Bible is teaching me is as an heir, I have a responsibility to have mercy on others. Brothers and sisters, let's pray this morning that we would live like heirs, that we would exercise the economy of mercy that we won't be so quick to try to make people pay up. I know they did you wrong. What they did wasn't right. It was absolutely foul. 
but so was the thing that I did. So was the thing that you did. So instead of going and seeking revenge, instead of going and saying it's time to pay up, let's reflect on the blood that was paid for every one of us. That was the mercy of God and the grace of God being shown for us. So freely give to others what was freely given to you. Let's pray. Father, we honor you this morning and we are so grateful for your mercy. The scripture teaches us that your mercy is made new every morning. Father, it's because of your mercy that we weren't consumed. I'm so glad that your compassion did not fail. Great is your faithfulness. The Bible teaches us that if we confess our sin, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So Father, the question today is not whether or not we've sinned. Lord, we acknowledge that we've missed a mark. But Father, I am so excited this morning to know that you are merciful and you stand ready to forgive us. But now as citizens of the kingdom of God, as children of the king, you want us to flow in the economy of mercy. You want us to not only receive mercy, but also give mercy. In other words, you want us to love mercy. Father, I can't think of anything that's more beautiful. There's no greater currency than the mercy of God. And God, I thank you for us being able to receive it. But Father, I also thank you that we're able to give it. Father, I thank you for the lives that will be transformed through your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for the impact that will come through your mercy. Let it be that people would know you and experience you through the mercy that we extend through our lives. And as we close out this prayer, we pray the way that your son taught us. And we say, our Father who's in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And all of God's children say, amen. I love you. God bless you. I thank you for joining me this morning and leaning in with me. I know I threw a lot on you, um, but this is, this is your destiny. As an heir of God, he wants you to flow in the economy of mercy. And I just pray that you would go and exercise it, flow in it, allow it to flow through your life so that you can live. <laughs> God bless you. You take care.